Are rising interest rates for mortgage payments really a bad thing right now in this market? I mean, we've had incredibly low rates for a few years. That's kind of what started the whole problem of housing affordability being out of reach. So now that they're approaching seven and a quarter, um, what does that really mean? Is that a bad thing? What if we just kind of stayed here and muddled here for a while? I mean, what if rates kind of hung between seven and eight percent for maybe a year, maybe two years? Because the alternative is you have to ask yourself, what happens if rates plummet back down again? because we need another round of quantitative easing to keep the economy going and we reignite the housing market yet again. Now, if you're a seller, you like that. You know, the values are going up. You can grab your equity, maybe move to another state, find another house. If you're a buyer, you're like, oh man, here we go again. And uh, I called 2021 the year of the buyer beatdown. And I called it that because there was just too many bidding wars. Interest rates are low, money was free. And so all these institutional buyers are out there. There was a period in 2021, if you've watched my videos at all, where my advice was if you're trying to get in the housing market to sit on your hands for a while. Not because I thought the market was gonna crash, but I just thought people were making very poor decisions. They were waiving inspections, waiving appraisals, bidding way over the asking price. If you got in, some people regretted it because they got in and found some damage to the house that they had to fix. Some people did very well and they made money from 2021 to 2022 and they're still ahead today. So real estate's a long-term play. Back in 2020, 2021, in 2020 people were moving because they could. They got their bosses said that they could uh, no longer had the office, you know, at the office had to come in. But up in Seattle, from what I understand, Amazon's going to go on strike this weekend because they're asking them to come back to the office. Ooh, imagine that. I was questioning that when we had all this remote work. I said, you know, there's going to be some industries that are going to say, ah, this isn't working out too well. I kind of like the creativity that we had when people had conversations at the water cooler. And now that that's going away, they're saying, well, maybe we should start bringing these people in. But then again, it's not fair to the people that packed up in Seattle and moved to rural areas. Said, I'm getting out of the city. I get to work from home. I'm going to go to eastern Washington where there's more sunshine. Or I'm going to go over the Olympic Peninsula where homes aren't as expensive. Now all of a sudden, they're calling them back. So we're kind of in a pickle. But if interest rates stay high for a period of time, and I say high in relative terms... What could that mean for real estate? Well, maybe, maybe prices just kind of hover where they're at for a long time. And during this period, if you're a first time home buyer, it doesn't look like rent is climbing. Inflation's kind of starting to come down a little bit, not enough. But I don't think your rent's gonna go up 10% a year like it has been. So now's an opportunity for you to save your money. Sit tight. Interest rates could stay at this level for a long time. Uh, I hope they do. I don't want to see them get down to where we add more froth to the real estate market. But Rick, you're a real estate agent. Don't you want to sell houses? I, I look at the long-term trend for real estate and say, you know, there's always ups and downs. Uh, the opportunity for young people to get in a house now seems to have disappeared. And you read all kinds of projections. Like I just read one this morning. What do house prices look like in the year 2030? Well, you know, I, I applaud their research, but nobody can look out that far. But the one thing is true, and that is real estate over the long term continues to go up consistently at about 4% a year. So maybe a safe bet to say that in 2030, house prices are going to be more expensive, but wages may be up as well. That's what everybody's kind of waiting for. We're seeing some of that. And then there's some real disparities. In other words, San Francisco, the average, average house price is $2 million. Albany, New York, it's $210,000. So where you live really depends on your affordability. Now true, it snows like crazy in Albany, New York, but it's also a very beautiful place. I lived there for about a year 
and uh, loved it out there. So there's pockets of the country where housing is still affordable, but maybe you just don't want to move. So you look at this interest rate hike up to today, like seven and a quarter. You know, boy, I hope those rates come down so I can afford a house. Well, if they come down, we know that at five and a half percent, people jump back into the market again. That's no surprise. We've already experienced that. So if we were to get down below five, I just don't like what that market would look like. I don't want to see that happen again. But boy, I'd be perfectly happy if we just kind of stayed where we're at. What's interesting is sales are down like 40%, but the number of contracts we're writing a month are equal to what's been our, what we call normal. In other words, typical. So we're down from a frothy market to a typical market when it comes to sales. But it was so brisk that everybody feels like the industry is just dying. Uh, when in reality, it's holding up pretty good. What is doing well is new construction. I was talking to my niece yesterday and they're looking at a new home in Ording, Washington, which is by Puyallup and uh, south of Seattle, for those that don't know the area. And she goes, you know, she goes, every resale home we looked at needed at least 50 to $75,000 in improvements. And of course, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, well, did it really need it or it just doesn't have the decor you're looking for? One person's improvement is another person's, um, uh, what do I call it, decorating idea. So in other words, you walk in and go, oh, I don't like those cabinets. Those have to be replaced. Well, they don't really have to. You just would rather get new cabinets in there because you don't like the style. But she said, but new construction, she says, we're not going to have to do anything. It's going to be very turnkey. We can go in. And she made a comment. She goes, I'm going to be really aggressive with the blue tape. And I said, oh, please, please don't be one of those kind of buyers. <laughs> You're putting blue tape on everything for the final walkthrough. I said, they'll fix it. Get it inspected. You'll be fine. But the attraction is, get this, they're getting a new home. And uh, her husband makes really good money. He's a plumber. And... They like it because they're getting in at 3.5% down, 4.9% fixed interest rate. So there again, you see the market is brisk where interest rates are below five. Now imagine if that happened to the whole general market again. I'd just say, here we go. Bidding wars are gonna fire back up. Then the resale market will become attractive again for both sellers and buyers, too attractive for buyers. But it doesn't solve the affordability problem. That'll drive pricing up. The reason that prices are going up right now is people are just sitting on their homes. They're just waiting. And uh, um, those that have to move will. There's enough buyers out there where you can sell your home. Those that don't have to move, you know, stay and put. No reason to give it up. So, again, I go back to our interest rates going up. Is that a bad thing for real estate? Not necessarily necessarily is it bad if you're in the middle of purchasing a home right now and they just jacked up a half a percent for the month it's a little painful so we'll just kind of watch this and see what's going on stay tuned to this channel if you have any questions shoot me an email at rick rickhelps.com